Good day everyone, Dr. Polaris here. Said to dwell in the rivers and lakes of Western Africa, the Dingonek has been described as approximately 12 feet in length, with a squarish head, a long horn, sabre-like canines, which has resulted in its nickname of the Jungle Warus, and a tail complete with a bony, dart-like appendage, which is reputed to be able to secrete a deadly poison. This creature is also said to be covered head to toe in a scaly, mottled epidermis, which has been likened to the scaled armour of a pangolin. The first reported sighting of this bizarre creature came in 1907. Explorer John Jordan was in Kenya, staying with the Lumbwa, a local tribe. He was on the hunt for a mysterious creature the natives called the Dingonek. One day, whilst hunting along the shores of a river, a large group of Lumba tribesmen emerged, racing through the bush to find Jordan, claiming to have seen a large beast that dived the second the group saw it. They described it as a cross between a sea serpent, a leopard, and a whale. Jordan thought that they were mad and demanded to be taken to the scene immediately. This story of Jordan's encounter at the river was first told in a book written by Edgar Bronson in 1910, a man famed for titillating his audience with ripping yarns. Holy saints, but he was a sight. 14 or 15 feet long, head big as that of a lioness but shaped and marked like a leopard, two long white fangs sticking straight down out of his upper jaw, back as broad as a hippo, scaled like an armadillo. He was a hideous old haunter of nightmares. That made you want an aeroplane to feel safe of him. The blighter's fangs looked enough to go clean through a man, Jordan said. He also said that it had reptilian claws that could carry the beast ashore and kill a man with ease. Frightened, he shot the beast behind one of its ears. The animal sprang up out of the water, standing straight up on its tail like a kangaroo. Jordan and the Lumba didn't think twice and beat a hasty retreat. Jordan was adamant that no known creature should have survived that shot behind the ear. In time, Jordan calmed and listened for the beast as his party ran deeper into the bush. Jordan says that he could not recall seeing the beast's legs because he was fixated on escaping and ponders how a .303 round was unable to stop the creature from a distance of 10 yards. Jordan says that although he searched for the beast along shorelines and bodies of water over several miles for two days after the encounter, he never again encountered the beast or its tracks. According to Bronson, Jordan then asked him to inquire with his hunting party about what they witnessed. Through an interpreter, Bronson claims they provided nearly identical descriptions of the beast. Bronson follows this account by noting that when he visited Uganda in November, he met with ex-collector James Martin, who told him that a great water serpent or reptile was seen on or near the north shore of the lake, which was worshipped by the natives, who believed its coming a harbinger of heavy crops and large increase of their flocks and herds. Later in 1913, Charles William Hobley published an article in the Journal of East Africa Uganda Natural History Society in which he discusses some unidentified beasts and mentions Bronson's account. According to Hobley, At the time this story appeared, it was considered that this was probably a traveller's tale told to entertain a newcomer. But I have since met a man who a few years back wandering around the Mara River near the Ungare de Bash which rises in Sotik, crosses the Anglo-German boundary and runs into Victoria in German territory. He emphatically asserts that he saw the beast. He was at the time where the Mara River crosses the frontier and the river was in high flood. The beast came floating down the river on a big log and he estimated its length at about 16 feet but could not be certain of its length as the tail was in the water. He described it as spotted like a leopard covered with scales and having a head like an otter. He did not see the long fangs described by Mr. Jordan. He fired at it and hit it. It slid off the log into the water and was not seen again. He mentioned several accounts of lake monsters in the region alongside Bronson's account. In 1918, Canadian magazine Maclean's reprinted material from an article written by Jordan himself in the Worldwide magazine and declared that his evidence for the Dingonek is very positive and believable. According to Jordan's article, he said, 
It lives in Lake Victoria and its numerous tributaries, and there is no record of the monster having been seen in any other part of the world. Whether it is a descendant of one of the huge prehistoric saurians that has, by a process of adaptation, continued but with slight modifications through prodigious ages to the present time, or whether it is an unclassified reptile or amphibian, it is equally impossible to say, as no specimen exists either of its bones or of its skin. That this monster does exist, however, there can be no particle of doubt, as the testimony of authoritative eyewitnesses cannot be reasonably discredited. On a related note, a certain cave painting located at Brackfontaine Ridge in South Africa has often been held up as proof of the Dingonek's existence. The image in question depicts a large brown, walrus-like animal with a tapered tail and long pointed tusks. The origins of this painting are obscure, but I'm not sure how it can be used as proof of the Dingonek. For one thing, the cryptid is considered native to East and Central Africa, a sizeable distance away from South Africa. Secondly, the walrus-like beast shown in the painting is depicted alongside other whimsical, clearly mythical beasts that do not exist, including a snake with the head of an antelope and a hippo-like creature covered in porcupine quills. Many differing explanations have been put forward to explain these sightings. These have included a freshwater walrus-like pinniped, a relict tooth whale of the genus Odobenocetops, or some sort of bizarre crocodilian. In the book Cryptozoologicon Part 1, Darren Nash and John Conway put forward the fun speculation that, if the Dingonek was a real animal, that it may be a semi-aquatic saber-toothed cat. They put forward the idea that African Macarodontines avoided competition with lions by adopting an increasingly semi-aquatic existence. In my opinion, what we are seeing here is a culture clash between European explorers and indigenous African belief systems. While Jordan and his compatriots were entering the jungles of Central Africa with prehistoric beasts already in mind, as we have seen in my other videos, African beliefs take for granted the existence of spirit beings that are as real as any living animal. The Dingonek is very clearly an example of this, given its strange and unfeasible combination of anatomical features. Of all the African cryptids covered so far, the Dingonek is certainly the strangest of all. Thanks for watching everyone. Next week I'll be covering more Alter Earth content, so be sure to tune in. See you again soon. Cheerio!